to view our data we're going to create another plan view and this one we will call preview and click on create we can then turn on the first of our sections which is called preview LX1 and you can see that it's automatically created the long section with the plan view shown at the top and the title block at the bottom. I can now bring back up our PPF editor and we'll go through some of the different options. We've already been through the front page here. Under the notes section we can type in notes about how our plot parameter file was created and it allows somebody else to come along and see what they need to change or how to change something if necessary. These are just user typed notes. If you now click on the title block you can see that we've clicked the use title block the same as we did under the plan plotting and inside the user title block we've selected our title block and filled in the various information. If we go into the plot sheet layout open that up and have a look at our margins our margins here are set showing the distance in from the left hand edge of the paper to the start of our long section plot the same with the right the top and the bottom in this case the top will be measured from the bottom of our plan plot and we'll come to that later on if we now look at the pagination you'll see that we're going to use pagination and that means that we will cut off our sections every 300 meters as shown here and the next one will start with a 25 meter overlap which means it will start at 275. The boxes area if I just expand that out deals with everything that takes place down here in these boxes here this is known as the boxes area. The drop down here for the draw box mode determines whether or not you have the line work so at the moment we've got the draw boxes lines around the values area and further down here we decide where, whether we're going to draw and label the primary string which is the string we profiled and its position so you can either have it in the first box above the changes which is this one here or we can have it in the last box which would be up the top here if we look at the titles area we don't really use this except for to determine the spacing of the title which is 75 millimeters or this distance across here the values area is also just a default and it shows us that we're going to have our justification at the bottom and the number of decimals which in this case is 3 and the text size once again this is just a default which can be overwritten if we have a look at the changes for example we have the changes here and at the top this top box deals with the title and this bottom box deals with the values notice here we have decimal places as minus three a minus three means that the zero pad will be padded so if we didn't have the minus three this would show up just as zero if we now take a look at the primary string and I'll just expand this out a little bit so you can see it so the primary string once again the primary string is the string that we profiled in this case road one and at the top we have our title information and at the bottom we have our values if we now have a look at the tins titles heights the tins titles heights are using slightly different to the way that the primary string and the changes are set up in that it deals with sets so we create a set which is set number one determine which tin we're going to plot which was our ground tin we're going to draw it and its color and then we're going to label it so that's drawn up here and labeled down here so to label it if we expand out the tins titles heights and we go to titles this is where we determine the color the textile the size and the actual text so we've got to cross two lines natural surface the heights this is the values as shown here and here and the depths are what's shown down here so in the depths we have both the title and the values in the same area if we now take a look at our super elevation diagram down the bottom here 
This plot doesn't contain any super elevation, so I'll just turn off LX1 and turn on preview LX2. And you can see in our super diagram down the bottom here, we start off with um, just our standard left and right minus 3% crossfall, and then at change 399.177 in order to show this exact change where it actually takes off from we need to set this super elevation diagram you see we have several options here we need to set it using the option draw diagram using changes of cross sections and the cross sections will be the model of cross sections which in this case is road one sections however you can't pick this from the screen you must type it in once again, if we expand out our super elevation diagram, you can see we have an area for our titles, which is what's shown here. We have an area for our crossfall information, which is this text down here. We have our changes, as is shown here. And then for the left and right side, we have to nominate which strings to measure the crossfall from. So on the left side, we've taken the crown of the road and also the lipper curve on the left and on the right side we've taken the crown of the road and the edge of bitumen on the right. Just close some of these down to make a little bit more room. If we now have a look at the volumes we can see here the volumes deals with this area up the top here and over here we have the cut and fill text position we can either have it between the uprights as is shown or you can flip it round to be along the uprights in which case it would be written the same as the other values down further. When reading the volumes, the volumes are taken from the Road 1 volume report which was created in our apply menu. If I just expand this out, once again we have a titles area and the titles area is split into the overall title and then the cut and the fill. We then have a values area and this just deals with the text for the cut and the text for the fill. Just close this one down. If we look at the change, the change area shows what our change interval will be, in this case 20 meters. And so you can see we're at 280, 300, etc. And it also includes any of these extra things like the start and end changes, any horizontal intersection points, tangent points, vertical tangents, vertical intersection, crest and sags, etc. We can close down the boxes now and look at the datum area. And if we have a look at the datum area, that deals with this area up the top here. And it's just this bit of text. And we can either have a manual datum, in which case you could tick that on and type in a value. Otherwise, 12D will calculate the datum. And once again, we have negative 3 for our decimal places, which 0 pads it. This is our title. Um, and this 10 millimeters means that the graph area, which comes down to here, will get no closer than 10 millimeters to the top of the boxes, which leaves room for our datum area. The corridors here, once again, is the same as what we saw in our section views and it allows us to show such things as pipes which we don't have any in this view so it would show a cutting through of a pipe uh, in this case you would just see the oval shape if we expanded it out to five meters the same as we did with our cross section earlier you would see more of it on the left and right hand side directly below that we have the quick horizontal geometry we typically don't use the quick horizontal geometry or the quick vertical geometry because we're more likely to use the extensive horizontal geometry and that's these labels here so in this case we're labeling our horizontal curves up the top and we're labeling it with the radius which in this case is 200 meters here and to expand that out we have our titles area which would be the horizontal curve data and the type of text then we have the type of arrow we're using and also the arrow text or this text here. You can see in this case 
it's been labeled with a prefix R and a suffix M. We have a very similar thing for the vertical geometry. In this case we're labeling the vertical geometry, the grades, the grade lengths, the curve lengths and the curve radii. Once again we have our label area, our arrow types and the text style information which would be shown for example here. If I now just turn off our LX2 preview and turn on our LX1 preview we can see over here we have a pipe so the actual symbol from the pipe came from the corridors but if we look at the cuts menu down the bottom here all this text came from this cuts so the first thing we did was we defined two sets the first set was the sewer pipe which is over here and the second set defined the water pipe if I expand that out now the chainage the chainage is taken or is going to be positioned at the cut string so that's at the height of the cut string which was the obvert of the pipe it was then given a 4 millimeter offset and a 1 millimeter vertical offset the color is blue we selected our textile our prefix was CH for chainage it then gave the chainage and we set up the justification for the text and the number of decimal places if we have a look at the heights the heights is this one down here so top RL so once again we're looking at set number two we're using the height of the cut point which is the top of the pipe and then we're giving it a four millimeter offset and a nine millimeter vertically down offset once again it's blue we have our text we have a prefix of top RL then the value and a suffix of meters once again with two decimal places and the final one was our diameter same thing horizontal and vertical offset set up our text our prefix was DICL our suffix was meters diameter and in this case we also have the option of a factor so if we wanted to show this as millimeters we would have a factor in here of 1000 and then we would change this to millimeters diameter and then the result would be DICL 300 millimeters diameter we can now have a look at down the bottom here at the plan plotting and the plan plotting was obviously what we set up at the start and is this area here shown as you can see there's more margins so we've got our left right top and bottom if our plan plot is getting too close to our long section view we can change the bottom margin and make it say 400 or 500 and it will decrease this size in here we can add a border if we want one with just by ticking on and off and whatever color you require the view to plot was the one we set up earlier which is this long plan and so you must select this one it's a good idea to use the notes as we had previously to show which view needs to be used so if somebody else is using this plot parameter file they know that they need a plan called long plot to appear above the sections if we were now not going to plot to a model but we're going to send it to some other device whether it be a printer or AutoCAD or something we would go back to the section long plot inside here our plotter type we click on this list and we either select a Windows printer or we might select a DWG file if it was going out to AutoCAD or we could write it out to a PDF file and just as it did with creating the models you can see we have four different models including the one that's turned on it would create four different DWG files or four different PDF files